heat waves, torrential rain, and a strange blob in the Atlantic. It seems like our climate in Europe is entering uncharted territory. And in our latest Climate Now Live, we're trying to work out what's going on. Samantha, did it really rain more than average last year? And if so, why? Yes, it did rain more than average. So everywhere in blue was wetter. So because we have a warmer atmosphere with climate change, the atmosphere can hold more moisture. And this means when we have rainfall events or storm events, they drop more rain uh, more intensely than they have done historically in the past. Samantha Burgess there from the Copernicus Climate Change Service confirming what we all suspected. It has been raining a lot. And while many of us faced rain and floods, Others were hit by heat waves. In July, for the first time in our history as a World Health Organization, we decided to declare the ongoing heat wave as a health emergency. This is Francesca Racioppi, heat and health expert from the WHO. So it was unprecedented, terrible moment. A heat wave can crush your hospital simply because you mm. may see a, a, a very concentrated influx of patients that require immediate care. This graphic shows how many areas of southern Europe faced extreme and potentially fatal heat last year. Everybody should be concerned, even those who are fit and healthy. So what should you do if somebody seems to be in trouble? Try to lower their temperature, to keep them hydrated and to try to stabilize them taking them into a physiological area that is more compatible with human survival conditions. Moving on now to a different kind of heat wave, this time in the ocean. We were getting phone calls from people in June and July just wanting to know what on earth was going on. If you have a look at this map, you can see what raised the alarm everywhere in dark red faced its warmest ever temperatures last year. Helen Findlay from Plymouth Marine Laboratory explains there are lots of different factors that contributed to this marine heat wave, including lower wind speeds, which means that the surface water isn't mixed together in the same way. So the surface water, if you imagine it's like a stagnant pool in that case, that actually you're just yeah. absorbing all that heat as it comes in, as opposed to having a nice flowing system where you're actually able to mix cooler water with the rest of the ocean. Longer term, there's another problem too. Ocean specialists are concerned that the flow of salty, warm water from the equator up towards Europe is actually slowing down. And that could be responsible for the strange blob I mentioned earlier. We've got what we call a cold blob in the North Atlantic, sort of just below Greenland. And that's concerning because that's related to exactly where this transport of heat system um, would normally sort of dump its heat, if you like, into the Atlantic. And that's a climate driven effect. And that's due to inputs of fresh water system, because we've got more mm. melt and more river runoff, more rainfall in the higher latitudes, which is actually freshening the system. And that again has a consequence for the circulation pattern, which is very complex. It's going to take a lot more work to really understand how climate change is impacting the oceans. But the general outlook is clear. So as greenhouse gases continue to increase, temperatures also continue to increase, including in the ocean and sea levels continue to rise, glaciers and ice sheets continue to melt. Last year was the joint warmest on record in Europe and the warmest on a global scale, with temperatures 1.3 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average. Here's IPCC Vice Chair Diana Urgevosats. So we have not yet exceeded uh, the Paris target. Nevertheless, I do think that this last year, uh, the extremes and all uh, the different weather phenomena are very important warning signals that we have to um, accelerate our climate actions. Climate action means a big investment in adaptation to deal with the changes which are already inevitable, and also reducing emissions in order to slow down the rate of warming. And that means more renewables and being more efficient. We've seen huge growth in renewables, of course, across Europe, but is there enough sun, is there enough wind? Yes, to both. So when we look at 2023, we can see that the year as a whole saw a record proportion of electricity generation by renewables in Europe at 43%. And this was the second year in a row where renewable energy production uh, was greater than energy production from fossil fuel 
um, derived energy sources. Also, if we reduce the need for cooling by good buildings so that people don't, the houses don't get overheated, be it with good shading and more and more green and blue infrastructure, meaning more trees and perhaps ponds in cities, less concrete and less sealed surfaces, and we reduce the need for cooling energy. And that way, going back to your original question, we can use more, we can use better that available uh, amount of uh, renewable energy. So there you go, a snapshot of where we are with climate change and a plan on how to move ahead. Click on the link in the description to watch the full one hour version of this conversation and please head over to euronews.com climate now for an update on what's really happening to our planet. I'll see you soon.